Hello, hello, it's Tamfet here. Here's an item on number theory. Find all natural numbers n such that 2 raised to n plus 5 is a perfect square. Credits to the Art of Problem Solving community for this item. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Alright, so we have another one of these. Uh, te uh, technically speaking, this is an Olympiad question, but we're just asked to find a values of n. So let's try to prove our answer as we go along with our solution. Alright, now generally whenever there's an item like this, I tend to just try some values of n. So since, since n is a natural number, I just tried some positive integers n. So I just tried like from 1 to 9. And those are the values of 2 raised to n plus 5. So technically, trial and error for now. But anyways, probably we're going to get like small solutions. As you can see here, when n equals 2, I got 9, which is a perfect square. But at least in the first 9 values of n, I don't see any other values of n. So at least we know that there is, so we don't really have to prove that there's none. So Because sometimes there might not be any. But anyways, let's try to make some observations we can make here. Alright, 7, 9, 13, 21, 37, 69, 133, 5, uh, sorry, 261, 517. Well, might not be obvious to some, but the observation that I have here is that I have last digits with a cycle. 7, 9, 3, 1, 7, 9, 3, 1, and it comes in cycle of 4. Now, it might seem to be a very nice observation, but if you guys know the concept of the Euler's quotient, uh, since we're taking a look at the last digit, so technically mod 10, uh, phi 10 is actually equal to 4, so I guess that's no um, coincidence here. It, it will actually repeat in 4. Now, let's try to I'll take a look at the last digit. We have 7931, 7931, so apparently it's the pattern. Uh, that's the pattern and it goes in cycles of four but here we recall perfect squares well because two raised to n plus five must be perfect squares so i think the last digit should be one four nine six five or a zero so based from this no perfect squares end in seven or three so all right that immediately rules out the following options of n equals one 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. Alright, we can try to um, we can try to guess here that maybe all odd values of n will not work. So let's try to attack the question from there. Alright, for the even numbers, there isn't really a reason for us to rule out the values of like 4, 6, 8, and so on. But for now, at least from what, what, what we can see, I think the odd values will not work. So let's try to make a claim. We're going to claim n is even. So we're going to suppose n is odd and then we're going to prove by contradiction. Alright, so 2 raised to n plus 5, this is n, I'm just going to replace n by 2k plus 1, and that's going to be for non-negative integers k. So 2 raised to 2k plus 1 plus 5, alright, the 2 raised to 2k plus 1, I'm going to write it as 2 times 2 raised to k, again, properties of exponents, 2 times 2 raised to k, and that's going to be equal to 2 times 4 raised to k. Now, I'm going to do stuff under mod 5. You can do stuff technically under mod 10, but I kind of realized that uh, it's actually kind of nice under mod 5 as well. So if I take mod 5, so 2 times 4 raised to k plus 5 mod 5, well this 5 just goes away, and then this 4 becomes a negative 1. So it's technically 2 times negative 1 raised to k under mod 5. So it's technically either 2 or negative 2, depending on the value of k. So 2 or negative 2 under mod 5, we can just technically say that it's either 2 or 3 under mod 5. Alright, but we then recall the possible remainders or the residues, quadratic residues under mod 5. So we just have to check 0 to 4 because we're taking a look at quadratic residues under mod 5. So 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and 4 squared. That's going to give us 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16, obviously. And then checking each of them under mod 5, it's 0, 1, 1, 4, and 1. So apparently the possible residues under mod 5 is 0, 1, or 4. But from our observation, if n is odd, it's going to leave a remainder of 2 or 3 when divided by 5. 
All right, here we have arrive at the contradiction because it must be two and three, but we want it to be a perfect square. So I don't think it can be a perfect square. So I guess the claim that n is even, that would have to be correct. And that's by contradiction, all right? So we've successfully proven that n shouldn't be odd. So obviously n must be even. All right, after we get that n is even, we have the nice observation here because two raised to n plus five becomes two raised to two m plus five. Again, making the substitution n is equal to two m. Typical substitution because we, now we know that n must be even. All right, so m is a positive integer just to um, state it here. Now, two raised to two m plus five, all right, that should be a perfect square. And it's actually very uh, typical for us to do the following. Let's just say, we're going to make a nice substitution because it's going to be a perfect square. So we can just solve for integer values of m and in this case, y. So technically speaking, a Diophantin equation because, well, maybe we can do some, some nice factoring and that's going to be the trick that we're going to use here because we realize that 2 raised to 2m plus 5 equals y squared. We can actually write it as a, um, we can actually make the equation uh, look like something that we can factor into. Now here, we're just going to make, uh, without loss of generality, let's just say y is greater than zero. I mean, y can obviously have a negative counterpart, but just to simplify our, uh, just try, uh, just to simplify our calculations here, let's just set y equal uh, y be greater than zero. Anyways, so two raised to two m plus five equals y squared. Technically, we're just going to solve for integer uh, positive integers, m and y, in this part. So 5 is equal to y squared minus 2 raised to 2m. Now, that's nice because y squared and 2 raised to 2m, they're both perfect squares. Nicely factoring this difference of two squares into y minus 2 raised to m times y plus 2 raised to m. Now, here's where in the part where m and y, they're going to both be positive come into play because, as I've mentioned, y and 2 raised to m, they're both positive. So I'm pretty sure this factor is going to be positive. So since this factor is positive, I'm pretty sure this must be positive as well because they multiply to a positive number, which is five. All right, now the other observation we can make is that I'm pretty sure this one, the y plus two raised to m is gonna be greater than y minus two raised to m because then again, m is a po uh, y and m are positive integers. All right, now the last thing to observe is that we have five here on the left-hand side. Now five is a prime number. So factors of five, it's just one and five. So the way we have to assign factors is just, it's only one way. It, it must be one times five and we know which is bigger. So the bigger one is gonna be obviously five and the smaller one is going to be one. And that is the only possible assignment of factors so that this would be true. Again, this is thanks to the fact that, uh, this is all thanks to factoring here because it is a difference of two squares. We're able to factor and then utilize that. Oh, five is actually an, a prime number. So we now have the assignment of factors. All we have to do is just solve the systems for y and m. Technically, we only need the m, but it's also nice to get to try to get the y anyways. All right, so um, if I um, subtract the second equation from the first equation, I'm going to get two times two raised to m. That's going to be equal to four, right? Dividing both sides by two, I'll be get two raised to m equals two, and obviously here m would be equal to one. Now, if m would be equal to one, you can see that just substituting it back, you're gonna get y equals three. And that makes sense because a while ago, uh, if m equals one, if we substitute it here, it's gonna be two raised to two plus five, and two raised to two plus five, that's nine, which is the square that we got from our trial and error uh, earlier in the video. So we got nine to be the, one of the perfect squares. Now, obviously the last step is just to make sure that we don't answer m and to actually say that oh right we did the substitution 2 raised to uh, sorry, 2m equals n so since m equals 1 n here would be giving us the value of 2 all right so since we've concluded that n must be even and then we concluded that um, if n equals 2m then m can only be equal to 1 because there is only one possible assignment of factors in the factoring that we did we can finally conclude that there's only one solution to this question, such that two raised to n plus five would be a perfect square, and that is n equals two only. And this will be our final answer and the proof to this question.
Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!